This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Google Pixel 9 Pro and the Pro XL. So this year you get the same features, obviously different screen sizes and thus somewhat different battery capacities, but otherwise all the same features you get to pick between 6.3 inch and 6.8 inch. And in a year when, oh my God, 2024, right? Samsung, Apple, not much change with the latest generation of their phones. Google's actually making things better and updating stuff. Wow, we're gonna look at it now. All right, so there's been discussion, you know, it's sort of from the front is iPhone-esque because we have squared off sides, now that feel great, and the curvy corners and all that sort of thing, but whatever, and the back, it's all pixel all the time with that whole camera visor thing going on. So it is a new physical design for this year. The straight sides, it's weird, right? They're metal and they're shiny. It should be slippery, but somehow they have this soft, grippy texture to them. I don't know what they've done to the metal, but well done, Google. Glass front and back, like all phones are these days, you get Gorilla Glass Victus 2 in the front. So these are not inexpensive phones, okay? Google is going with the top tier here. So we're looking at $999 and $1099 starting price. And that's for 128 gigabytes of storage. Uh, you can spend more money to get more storage all the way you know, in the usual increments, all the way up to one terabyte if you want. So these are premium phones. The phones also have some weight to them, not unlike iPhones. Okay, with iPhones, it was stainless steel that did it, even when they went to titanium, still heavy. So seven and 7.8 ounces here. You know, it's a premium feeling heft, but you know, make sure your waistbands are nice and snug or your pants might get dragged down. First world problems in an era of giant phones. So when I was saying, you know, stuff actually changed, yes, it did. So. I, <laughs> Pixels didn't used to have the world's best displays. They're OLED displays. On paper, they didn't look so bad. You know, sometimes the refresh rate wasn't as high as some other competing models and stuff like that. But now they have a super actual display is their marketing name for it. But it's an OLED LTPO display. So it's variable refresh from 1 to 120 hertz. But 2,000 nits of brightness and 3,000 nits peak, they look good. You know, you don't put them next to the iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy S24 series phone and go, oh, well, it looks a little dull or dim or not as vibrant. It, they're all that. They're very good looking. So that's nice. You have, unsurprisingly, a new generation of processor. It's still a Google Tensor processor, for better or worse. It's the Tensor G4. The good news is it's optimized for the Gemini AI. You get a year of Gemini advanced edition, which is like $239 otherwise, included with the phone. So uh, it is optimized for those AI features, which you may or may not be super excited about, but you know, it's still gonna underperform compared to the latest Snapdragon processor or what Apple's putting in the iPhone. Uh, does it matter day to day? I mean, I'm not seeing the thing bogged down, but if you're buying this to play a whole lot of highly graphical games, then it's gonna matter to you. So keep that in mind. But for daily use, probably daily use two years from now, you might start to notice more compared to the competition that this phone isn't keeping up. That's, that's the only real hurt here. Uh, good news though is two things that used to be hurts for tensors was, was temperature and battery life. Both of those have improved. Well, they put a vapor chamber on this thing now, so that's gonna help with the temperatures on this. And indeed it does not get really hot anymore, which they sometimes used to do if you're working them hard. I mean, I can play Genshin Impact on this and it plays, performs just fine, and it no longer gets my fingers sweating. So, good. Also, battery life is better. Capacity of the battery is obviously higher on the bigger one, but it's also driving a larger, higher resolution display. Uh, to be honest, I was pretty surprised by this because that wasn't something I enjoyed about Pixels, the battery life. And now I'm getting a full day's use out of the 6.3 inch standard Pro model and a day and a half out of the Pro XL, which is right up there keeping pace with the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro Max. So good times. There's a little less hurt for those of you who aren't hardcore gaming on your Pixel and you don't really care so much about that stuff, but everybody cares about battery life and temperature. Those are good too. And speaking of battery life and charging, we also get faster charging. Probably they have a little more confidence now with that vapor chamber and all that in, in the heat that's generated by faster charging, but it does support 45 watt wired charging and supposed fast charging for the wireless. It's, it's okay, you know, it's like Gen 2 level. So that's nice. In fact, it's a little bit faster than the Pixel 9 Fold, which we will be reviewing separately, don't you worry.
got that review in the pipeline. So that's all nice. And with the cameras, I mean, you, you expect a lot from Google and they deliver as always. Is this leaps and bounds over the 8 Pro series? Not so much, but a good evolution here of the, the computational photography and the hardware inside. You get triple rear cameras, regardless of which size phone you choose. You get 5X telephoto, and that's optical telephoto, obviously. You've got your main and your ultra wide cameras on board and the usual bevy of very useful and very pleasing pixel features, including night sight, astrophotography, all of that sort of thing. They're getting better at video too, because you know you can go neck and neck with the iPhone when it comes to photo quality. It's a matter of preference, color temperature you like better, how much sharpening you want, all those sort of things. But uh, video was the iPhone's purview. They just really beat everybody else. And we're getting closer now with the Pixel. You got 4K, 60 frames per second video, and you've got cinematic features and all that sort of thing. And you can even do 8K at 30 frames per second, which probably nobody cares about all that much at this point. But uh, the video on this is perfectly serviceable. And um, if I had to pick between this and the S24 line of cameras, you know, it, I probably would pick Google because I really like the way that they process images. Of course, you can go in and manually edit things to taste, but you get more believable colors here compared to Samsung, which still tends to amp things up. And night photography, um, Samsung can overbrighten some things sometimes at night, makes it a little less, less natural than the Pixel does. As for AI features, uh, again, you know, I mean, that's the buzzword, I think largely because Wall Street likes AI this year, but you do have Gemini on here. And the good news is for those of you who tried Gemini and needed Google Assistant stuff, it couldn't do that. Now it hooks in with Google Assistant. So if you have Google Home products, Nest and all that sort of thing, lights that you need to control, that all does work, even if you've elected to use Gemini over Google Assistant, which is still available as an option here. And of course you've got, you know, I don't know, it's, it's not, the greatest idea that this whole when was a photograph a representation of reality kind of go away right so we've, we've got the magic eraser thing which i do like i mean it's not exactly breaking reality when you want to remove a piece of trash at the feet of your girlfriend or something when you're taking a picture right but you can do things like add yourself in after the fact and it's there if you want to do that and then you can have natural language conversations with gemini's <laughs> Maybe if you're feeling really lonely, I don't know. Okay, bad jokes aside, it can be useful when you want to know stuff. God knows we are all Google stuff all the time, don't we? So having a more natural way of interacting and asking further questions or asking her or him, depending on the voice you choose, you know, to go in a certain direction, that sort of thing, it, it's there. It probably will get more sophisticated. There's that. Also, chasing the iPhone's coattails, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes Apple copies Android phones too. We have satellite SOS. So, you know, if you're out of cell and Wi-Fi range and you're having a whoopsie in the great outdoors, it's there to help you. Seriously, that, that can actually be a very good thing. I live in a place where there are a lot of places with no cell service and beautiful mountains that you can get in awful kinds of trouble with. And there's also crash detection too. So. It can automatically 911 for you and say, mm -mm, you know, good things to have. And then there's the temperature sensor. That's an unexpected thing that they brought in. So when you look at the temperature sensor app, it basically, you know, offers you can check liquids, like how hot is your soup and various things. They don't mention body temperature, but they claim to do body temperature. And it seems to be fairly accurate. So you've got a temperature sensor. You want to check that your electric stove's burner is working correctly. You can use the sensor on this. You want to know something is too hot or cold to the touch. And you don't want to sacrifice your fingers to find out. Well, that feature is there. But as a quick way of checking body temperature, take it with a grain of salt. Try it on yourself or your kid or whoever it is you need to establish a baseline on. And it can be kind of useful. Quick and dirty review because a lot of this stuff we know about these phones already, but that's what's new here. And I'm really happy just to see newness at this point. And for the most part, really thoughtful additions and improvements, the kind of things we want to see. Longer battery life, cooler running phone, way better displays on these. And of course, the cameras you come to know and love from Pixel phones. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.